Hi, this is Dr. Everson. In this video, we're going to talk about just doing some basic statistics, how to find basic statistics, use like mean, median, mode in R using RStudio. So to be able to do this, you're going to need to have RStudio and R downloaded onto your computer. You can see I have RStudio here. If you look back at my video called um, Gentle R Number One, you'll be able to get some help in doing that and an overview of using the R interface. So I'll assume you have those basics. Now I have here in my R script file already preloaded the code that I've used here, and you can follow along on your computer if that's helpful to you. The first thing I want to show you is that R has some built in data sets. And um, those are, you can use those as a student for practice. If you're an instructor, you can use it for demonstrating and so forth. Really can be very helpful. One of the things that you can do in R is something called attaching a data set. When you do that, you're basically telling it that, you know, for upcoming analyses here in the near future, I'm going to always be using this data set. Okay, and that way it's a little simpler and easier referring to that data that you're going to use. So we're going to do it this way in this particular video so you can see how it's done. In order to attach a data set, in other words, you know, tell R, use this data set for now. Use the data command with the name of the data set in parentheses. Now, if you're using your own data set, you would just put there the name of the data frame or whatever um, type object you have, whatever you have in R, um, you're going to use that. So what I'm going to do, and again, if you haven't done this before, if I just have my cursor in my in this script file here, which again, I discussed in that gentle R1, anywhere on that line and click run, it'll it'll run that particular line so now it's done that it's attached that data set or i can highlight like this what i want to run and hit run as well that will also work or of course i can just type it down below there's a variety of things you could do now once i've done that you will see over here in the environment that um, it exists okay that it's there right something that is actively um, in use at this time in your R session. If I were to just close R, come back in, and even if this script file is, is reloaded and, and um, R Studio does automatically reload your last used script file, so you will see this script file there if you just close and open if you had it. And um, it will do that, but it will not reopen the, that or reattach that data set so what you'll need to do is run that line again okay there we go it's it's lined up okay now what i want to do is i want to see what's in my data set i want to review what's in my data set i always want to do this kind of thing so that i can make sure that the data loaded correctly a variety of ways you can do it one is using this head command which always shows you the first few rows so i'm just going to run it like that and you will see down below that it's giving you the um, various variables or that exist in the data set. And it's giving you just the first, in this case, the first six rows of the data set. Okay, using that head command. So I can look at it and make sure everything looks like it should look. I can do the same th thing to see the end of it with the tail command. And I'm just typing it here down below, not adding it to my code. Of course, I could put it up here as well. And if I do that, it's going to show me the last few rows. Another thing you could do to check on your data frame is if I come over here where it shows under the environment tab, I'm just going to double click on that. When I've done it, it opens another tab. This is my script file. It says untitled because I haven't saved it yet. And now um, I will open it and I'll see the entire, the entire data frame. Okay, I'll see everything, all the rows and all the columns. So sometimes that can be helpful to check out what you've got. Okay, and you'll see that double checking on it is equivalent to using the view command. And we know that because it, it did it down below. Okay, so view. Now, um, let's just look at again, calculating those basic statistics. In order to find a mean, the command is just mean. And 
I can store the result into a new, um, a new object, or I can just look at it on my screen. When I use the assignment arrow here with the carrot and dash, then that's going to not show it to my screen, the answer. It's going to just show, um, store it. So if I just click on this line, click on run, you'll see that down below it showed it ran, but it didn't show me any output like I see up here for it. I don't I don't see what it is. It's there, it's stored in this name of this variable. Well, a couple of ways I can see what the result is. One over here in this window that shows what's going on, it shows me the variable and it shows what it equals. Now it can do that when what is in the object is just like a single value. But obviously when there's a lot of stuff, it's not going to just show you like, like for this, the whole data set, empty cars, it gives you an idea. There's 32 rows, 32 observations with 11 variables, but it doesn't give you all the data because it wouldn't fit right there. Right. But when it's just a single value, it'll often show it over here. So, so that's one way to see, see it. Another way is down here. I can type in the name of it, you know, um, and it'll and hit enter just typing the name will show it to me or of course I can get the same thing by just highlighting only that part right there um, which means just run that equivalent to typing it in like I just did or of course I could also have done it by just running this piece or not even having what comes before it as my line of code hitting run and I will see what happened before okay so so that's something that that can be done now let's look what happens here um this particular can um, um command is a command nested in another command and you can tell that because it's got or it's function will nest in another function technically because it's got parentheses twice two sets of parentheses the first command um let's just highlight it so you can see what it is it says paste Okay, those things together. It wants it to paste those things together. So it's going to paste, and you see in quotation marks in green there, it's kind of green, it's hard to see when I've highlighted it now, the words mean MPG colon. So literally that text, okay, it's going to paste that text to comma what's in that variable mean MPG. It's pasting those together. If I were just to run that, it's going to just it's just going to show you what it that part what it did so it's now created something really it's this is um text that looks like that okay why because maybe i want to display that somewhere okay um and then the print command around it really just um will give me similar to that but a little cleaned up it's just going to print um that extra the extra value so actually it's the same exactly the same so it's just going to print it for you so you can see it it's just something you can um, a little thing that you can do if it's helpful to you not necessary okay so that's looking at the mean now let's look at the median okay very very similar um, except for the only thing that's changed is I've got the word median there instead of mean and of course the variable I stored in has a different name I ran that and um, automatically you see when I run a line, the cursor goes to the next line. I'm just going to run that and it's going to show me how to create it. You don't need that, um, this complicated stuff after. If you don't want, you can just tell it, you know, you can just again highlight this part or print that part and run it to show to your screen what it is. And you can also see it over here because it's just a, a single value. Okay, now let's look at the next thing that's very common the standard deviation sd for standard deviation very straightforward it's just going to do that for you and and various ways i can look at what the value is okay now um just to make it a little more advanced we can get a variety of statistics at one time. This is the most commonly used command probably, it's at least the one I use the most and one I see often used, which is instead of just looking at um, particular statistics individually, I want it to give me a whole set of summary statistics at once. So let me run that and we'll show you what it gets. And this shows, um, 
uh, another way to show your to do the results you want not really very necessary what we really want when we're done is to look at this we could type print then that variable to see it or again i could just um, type in the name of the variable without the print in front of it and what it gives me is the minimum you'll see the mean the mean right here in the median like we looked at before, the maximum, the first and third quartile. If you haven't had a statistics course, first quartile is the value that 25% of the data falls at or below. And third quartile is the value that 75% um, of the data falls at or below. So think quarter, 25, three quarters, 75. Um, it's, it's similar to um, sometimes third quartile is often like the 75th percentile so if you if you've had had a child say or you remember from your own schooling when you got back standardized test scores if it told you you were at the 75th percentile that means you scored above 75 percent of the other students same idea here 75 fifth percentile or third quartile think three quarters 75 is at the value 22.8 you can also just look at a summary of the entire um, data set at one time, okay, by just type in summary empty cars, it's going to give you all the variables. And you see what it's done here now is each of these is another one of the variables in the, in the data set. It does it assuming that these are all interval ratio or continuous type variables, which they may not be. So for some of the variables, you know, this data wouldn't really make sense. It wouldn't be logical. For example, if there's a gender variable, it doesn't make sense to have a, a mean gender, that kind of thing. You don't calculate these types of statistics for categorical data. So if any of these variables are categorical, then what you see here isn't something you really want to interpret or use. But sometimes if you have a lot of um, variables, it's quick to just do it this way, even if what you're getting back might not make a lot of sense. Anyway, I hope this is helpful to you for the, the real basic um, statistics that you can get out of R.